What's up everybody, on today's episode of The Fight Life, we have two UFC lightweights in the house. We have Anthony Jaquani and Mike Chiesa, who are going to be fighting on UFC 173 on May 24th. Um, basically, they just stopped in, talk a little bit about their matchup. So, let's go ahead and jump right into this and get started with Mike Chiesa. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Jordan McDonald for Fight Life Media, and this bearded gentleman to my right is none other than Michael Chiesa. Michael is fighting for the UFC at UFC 173. He's fighting Francisco Trinaldo. And Mike, I appreciate you stopping by. First, let's hear about how this training camp's going. It's been a good camp. Uh, I split my time between Spokane, Washington, my home gym, and then coming here uh, to Syndicate MMA, training under John Wood, uh, a couple good lefty training partners. Francisco's a lefty, so, you know, those are kind of few and far between back home. So, uh, you know, I just got in shape while I was at home, came back down here, worked with like AJ Williams and Phil Dace, and uh, had John Wood kind of overseeing my camp, and uh, things have been really good. Yeah, so is this a recent decision to start splitting up your training camps here in Vegas and Spokane? A little bit. You know, I've traveled around and gone to a few different gyms. Um, you know, I love going to Alpha Male. I like the MMA lab. I like going to certain places. But as far as going somewhere for a camp, I have to be comfortable. And, uh, you know, the second I met John, we kind of hit it off. We see eye to eye on a lot of things. He has a lot of similarities to my coach back home and the way that he teaches things and his, uh, his outlook on the sport. So... I felt really comfortable coming down to Vegas, especially after training there for the first time. Uh, I think it was a good decision. Yeah, and so coming from Spokane, there's a lot of really talented fighters that have come out of there. And a lot of people are kind of wondering, like, what's the magic ingredient? What do you think uh, is going on back home that has allowed you and so many other fighters to be so successful? Well, it's a blue collar city. You know, it's not it's like 200,000 people, so it's not not a lot of population, not a lot of flashing lights and a lot of glamoury stuff. It's very gritty. It's farm country. You know, definitely like a lot of people have a blue collar work ethic. So on top of that, you know, you got Rick Little, who's been our head coach for myself, Sam Cecilia, Julie Pena. Uh, you know, he's played a significant role in a lot of other, you know, strike force and UFC vets, uh, played a significant role in their career. Um, but it's just the way that he coaches and the way that we train that has kind of gotten us to where we're at. And, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. He, he kind of built me from the ground up. So, I mean, we got, we got things going right in Spokane for sure. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. And uh, speaking of where you're at, now you're fighting for the UFC. I know this has been a dream of yours. Do you feel like you're acclimating well? And if so, what really played a part in all that? Yeah, I, th I think things are definitely going good. You know, I still, I look back on the loss to Masvidal and that kind of haunts me in my sleep, but I think it will for the rest of my life, um, you know, that being the first one. But I think things have gone very well when you're fighting at this level. You know, you're going to have to chalk up some losses. I mean, in a perfect world, I always say this, you know, every guy in the UFC would be an undefeated world champion, but that's not how, th that's not how this works at this high level. Um, you know, winning tough was definitely my biggest accomplishment thus far. And, um, the thing that I like about it most is it's let me leapfrog in a tougher competition, um, you know, so I couldn't be more happy to be where I'm at right now. And, you know, I'm just looking to capitalize and keep moving forward uh, on May 24th. Yeah, it seems to me that a lot of fighters can deal with, you know, the quintessential, the UFC jitters, but you really never seem to be affected by that. Do you think your experience with tough helped in that respect? Absolutely. You know, I always tell people that tough, is like college for getting into the UFC. I mean, you're confined in a house, everybody hits a breaking point, you hit your lows, you kind of lose your mind for a little bit, but you know, you deal with fighting in the octagon, you deal with cameras in your face all the time. You're fighting top level guys that are, you know, people people kind of rag on tough nowadays, saying that, the, you know, ragging on the fights and the fighters, and it's like, you know what? These guys were picked because they're the top prospects that the matchmakers in the UFC are looking to put into the promotion. So. You know, that's why I call it the college of the UFC, because you're fighting the top prospects that the UFC is looking at. And ultimately, you're going to pick a couple guys out of the bunch that are going to move forward based on their performances. So, yeah, definitely. I think tough definitely takes care of the UFC jitters. I remember my first fight, 
at UFC 157. Uh, I consider that my first official UFC fight because it's out from the Ultimate Fighter. You know, don't have that hanging over your head. Finally, an official UFC fighter. And I, ha I was more excited than I was nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, this is finally here. Like, it wasn't jitters. It was like excitement. So I can definitely attribute that to the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, that's awesome. One thing I always like to ask fighters, uh, you've got lots of fans who've obviously never fought before. If you were talking to one of those fans and tried to explain to them what a fight experience is like, like how would you explain that from like the time you show up at the venue, you get your hands wrapped, like how could you kind of like explain that to someone who's never really experienced it before? I know it's like a very cliche thing to say, but it's like a roller coaster ride. You know, um, every fighter is different, obviously, but for myself, the way I go through, you know, getting my hands wrapped, getting warmed up, walking out to the fight. It's like, I get super nervous. I'm getting my hands wrapped. And once, you know, once I'm getting my hands wrapped, it's like I'm getting handcuffed into this fight. Like there's no way out now, you know? And, you know, when I start warming up, I'm like, man, my, my punches feel weak and I don't feel right, but th they're sharp and they feel good. And then, you know, the nerves just kind of build up. And uh, I don't know why this always comes to mind. Every time I'm like right about to walk out and I've actually verbally said this before, I'm like, why didn't I just like stay in college? What, what am I doing right now? Like who in their right mind would want to do this for a profession? But the second you walk out, at least for me, the second I walk out to that crowd, even back when I was just an amateur fight in front of a small handful of people, the second I walk out, it's just like excitement. It's like pure happiness. I couldn't, I couldn't explain it any other way. It's just like, you couldn't take the smile off my face. I love performing in front of the fans. You know, once you get in the cage, you get that, you get that adrenaline dump and you just don't think, you know, you just, you let your body react. And then the next thing you know, you're getting your hands raised and you don't even remember what happened. You're like, how did this happen? How did, I know I won, you know, but I don't remember anything. And you go back and watch a fight. It's just, it's a roller coaster. You know, you get hit your highs and your lows. And then ultimately the ride comes to an end, whether you won or lost it, either way, it's just a. And then you're a, like, sign me up for the next one. Exactly. <laughs> now fighting, obviously it's a really, really tough sport. It's, I mean, in my opinion, one of the most unforgiving sports in the world. So you've got to be really, really motivated. So what for you specifically, like what motivates you to participate in such a tough sport? What motivates me is just, I look back on where I came from. You know, I, I, I wasn't a talented athlete. I wasn't some tough guy growing up. So that definitely, definitely motivates me to just kind of keep evolving as a person and, and taking advantage of the, of the opportunities and the blessings that have been put in front of me to make a name for myself and do the right thing. And just, you know, I love competing. It's not fighting to me. Like a fight would be like if somebody like punched a girlfriend or something stupid, like it, it's just competition. It's what fuels me. It's what makes me feel alive and it satisfies my soul, I guess. So that's just what motivates me is I just want to be a fierce competitor and, uh, for me, I just feel blessed to be able to do it at the highest level. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna lose, I want to lose big. If I'm gonna win, I want to win big. So I just, it's the competition that drives me, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Now, as fans are getting to know you better and better, many may already know that your beard is kind of a tradition. You quit shaving when you start a fight camp, um, but you got a little addition in the back there, a little rat tail. Is that new, or is that you always got that going on back there? Or? It's a new thing. Um, <laughs> You know, I always had long hair growing up. Everybody that knew me, I always had like shaggy hair. Like even when I was in middle school, I had the shag, but it was bleached, super, super <laughs> lame. But uh, I've always had long hair. I've always cut mullets. I've always done crazy stuff. And uh, I just got tired of fighting with my hair in my face. Like a lot of times, and I'm not using it as an excuse, but there's a few of my fights on tough where my hair was flying in front of my face. And it's like, not only are you getting punched, but you got this ponytail kind of swinging right here. And it's kind of, kind of messing you up. And so I decided I'm not going to fight with the long hair and the pony. I love the samurai look. I just, it's cool, but I just can't do the long hair in my fights anymore. And the beard, there's a funny story behind the beard. Cause I actually, I never used to grow it this big. I used to just kind of get kind of scruffy, you know, shave right before training camp, let it get kind of scruffy. And, and then I went on tough. And after I won my fight to get in the house, it started to get kind of out of hand and get kind of annoying. I mean, it hurts when you're rolling and it's getting pulled on. And I told the producers like, hey, I really want to like shave this thing off. And they're like, you can't because we can't use old footage. So you have to, your look has to stay the same for this whole thing. So no haircut, no shave, just deal with it. And then when I got out of the house, I had this massive beard, and this whole Jesus look, but the fans loved it. I mean, it was like, fear the beard, long hair, don't care. And so it's like, <laughs> If one thing's going to go, it's going to be the long hair. But for the fans, I'll keep the beard, and it kind of grew on me. So it's 
kind of here to stay. Yeah, I dig it. But uh, are you planning on shaving it after your fight or are you just going to kind of keep it, maybe trim it up a little bit? The last time I had a clean shave was after I won the finale. So it, it'll be almost two years since I've like taken shaving cream and a razor to my face. So I'm going to do it just, you know, it's always been there. It's always going to come back. I mean, it's just going to keep growing faster and faster as I get older. So, but I don't want to show the world that I'm not that scruffy, bummish looking guy. I'm actually halfway decent looking under this beard. So. You got a baby face under there? Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah, I look like I'm 17. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna shave it off after this fight and just kind of like feel. I want to see if I still have a chin, you know, like kind of see what's under there. <laughs> That'll be interesting. I wonder if I'll recognize you. You won't. No. No. Uh, so after this fight, obviously you don't want to ever look past an opponent. But let's say everything goes as plans and you win. What is uh, in store for you in the future? Just keep moving forward. Um, you know, for me, uh, I feel like if. If you're not in the sport to become a world champion, I think you're lost. You know, I think that, you know, what's the point in doing this? What's the point? I mean, I know there's guys that, you know, they fight to support their family and I can respect that, you know, but for a guy like myself where I, you know, no kids, no family, you know, what am I doing this for? I'm doing this to become a champion. And uh, I just want to keep moving towards that goal. Obviously, you know, I have nothing but respect for Jorge Masvidal. I mean, the guy's tough. He's ranked 14th right now. But I'm looking to pass him. I'm looking to pass him and move forward, and hopefully that'll make me feel a little bit better about losing. And you know, I'm not looking past Ronaldo. I mean, this is a guy that's very dangerous, very well-rounded. Um, I think he's going to be my toughest fight thus far. And uh, you know, not looking past him. But if all goes according to plan, and I get the win on May 24th, you know, I'm looking to crack into the top 15. I deserve to. There's guys from my season that are moving ahead of me. And I got to let them know that I won the show for a reason. There's a reason why I should be ahead of them. So just got to keep moving forward, looking to get in the top 15. All right, Mike. Well, I look forward to watching your fight. I'll be there. And I appreciate you coming by. And everybody, Michael Chiesa, Jordan McDonald, and this is Fight Life Media. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fight Life Media Studios. We have Anthony Jaquani here. He's going to be fighting the UFC 173 against Vince Pichel. How's it going, man? It's going great. It's going real good. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this upcoming fight. Uh, pretty much I'm fighting a brawler, <laughs> really, to tell you the truth. I don't know nothing about this kid. All I know is he's, on, uh, he's from the Austin Fighter Season 15. Um, he's a brawler. He's a hard puncher. Um, he has no videos I can, cat I can watch and do some studying on uh so yeah pretty much uh <laughs> i'm pretty much just shooting the breeze on this kid <laughs> that's it so how do you how do you game plan for something like that if you don't have the footage you can't really see it your coaches can't find it really we focus on like some of his old videos and try to see if uh and try to watch like some of the new videos that he has and see if he's improved much and if, and if he has, then we'll go back. If he hasn't, then we'll go back. If he's still the same person, then we'll go back onto all the old videos that he has, uh, like in his, up, in like his past fights, and just study on that. All right. So you're fighting UFC here in Vegas. Um, you know, what does that feel like to be able to to be able to train here, do your whole camp here, and then be able to fight here as opposed to having to travel somewhere? Oh, it actually feels really good. I don't have to pretty much pay for anybody's plane tickets. <laughs> I could just drive straight from my house over to the to the venue, just training my gyms, training my people, and you know not going anywhere. Cause I hate I hate traveling. I'm a person who just like to stay where I'm at, fight where I'm at. But you went to Paris. Well, I was getting paid to go to Paris, so get <laughs> to teach, and yeah, that's the only reason why. But other than if it's like for fighting, then it's totally different. I, you know, I want to stay where I'm at. I don't like to go anywhere else. You know. So let's talk about that, man. You have opportunities outside of, I mean, it's still within the sport, but it's outside of just fighting, being able to teach and travel and do stuff like that. What has that been like for you? Oh, it's been great. You know, I've been able to go to a lot of different countries uh, now and to a lot of different cities. Um, I went to NYC to help Barboza get ready for his fight when he fought Cowboy. <clears throat> I went to Paris to teach um, out there for like two weeks. Um, I went to Japan with a whole... Um, USO, well, not USO tour, but it was, uh, it's kind of like the USO tour. We went out there, it's like me, Matt Brown, 
uh, Todd Duffy, we all got to go out there, teach some seminars, uh, talk to a bunch of the natives. Um, yeah, this type of life is, is great, man, because it allows us to do like uh, a lot of different things. Right. So let's, let's go back to where you first got started kickboxing and doing all your stuff. So, yeah. you know, what, uh, what, what actually got you into the sport? Uh, what actually got me into the sport was, uh, I always loved martial arts, martial arts but uh, I was a dancer before I became a fighter. Um, but I didn't get to actually perfect my skills before I even, you know, got to the level where I wanted to get to. Um, my teacher, Saxon, you probably know who he is. He's the first person I started off with. Uh, he didn't like the fact that I was dancing. Uh, so he tried his best to put me in more in, into, he tried, my, he tried his best to put me in, bring, keep me in the, in the gym more than allow me to, you know, continue on with my dancing. So he put me in my first fight. I actually fell in love with it. And just start from there. You know, so what, what's that like for you to have come from that, you know, that background and then be able to, to be where you are now? Like, you've been fighting in the UFC for, for a while. You have all these opportunities. So, you know, just to see yourself and where you were and where you are, what does that feel like? Uh, it feels great, you know, coming from a, a, small, town in Garland, a small town in Garland, Texas, <laughs> to living out in this wonderful uh, city, which is still crazy. Uh, it, it feels really great, you know, uh, a lot of accomplishments that I've done and, and it's showing off right now. Um, <clears throat> now, you obviously were kickboxing before you got into MMA. Um, watching kickboxing take off the way that it has within the last couple of years, is it something that you that you miss or is MMA? I'll tell you, it freaking sucks. <laughs> In my days, kickboxing wasn't even that grand. And now look at this, there's glory, there's K1, all this stuff. But, you know, I'm happy. I'm fighting for you, one of the best... Uh, one of the top uh, uh, organizations and MMA organizations in the world, but shit, but shoot, I wish I could still be kicking boxing right now. You know, I like to kick people in the face and punch it. So when you when you go out and you teach the seminars, is that really your focus is more MMA style, or are you trying to teach a little bit more of the kickboxing? I mean, I can't teach you a damn of a take of a takedown or jiu-jitsu. I, I know it, I know the defense, but I'm only studying it just to help me out to get back up. And if I do, uh, and if I do see a submission, I'll go for a submission. But my my main game plan is just to knock you out, kick you out. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the stuff that you do outside of the sport when you're just kind of hanging out and got your free time. What what is it that you do? Uh, stuff that I do consists of staying at home, watching movies, <laughs> rollerblading. I do inline skating, so yeah, I do that too. Rollerblading? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. I'm not a rollerblader. I'm not one of these. <laughs> I'm not one of those. I do inline aggressive skating. I can so, show you my K2s, son. So, I got so K2s. A, so when you do <clears throat> aggressive skating, do you uh, wear jean shorts like if you were rollerblading? No. I wear my basketball shorts with my long high socks, knee socks. You know? Yeah. I keep it gangster. There you go. Keep it real gangster. All right. So, so <laughs> explain, explain uh, this aggressive skating that you're talking about. It's just a better way to, <laughs> to put you as a frubu. <laughs> nah. But, I mean, you do a lot of tricks and stuff like that with the, with the roll blades. Go down the high, pa uh, high pound, uh, uh, ah, down the ramp, high pipe, all that stuff. It's a much better way of uh, saying that, yeah, I don't like skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> this interview is all over the place. I don't know what the hell I just said. <laughs> I'm just throwing words out there, not making any sense whatsoever. <laughs> That's me. I thought you guys know that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, going and traveling and, and training guys like Edson Barboza. You guys had a great fight. Um, what's that like to train somebody to prepare for an opponent after, after you've taken a loss? Like oh, it was actually a lot of fun. I love Edson Barboza. And when he called me to come out and help him out, I was, I was game. Because, you know, a guy that, um, and plus I have a lot of respect for him. You know, uh, he's not one, he's not your typical fighter. But once you fight him, once you fight, on, uh, fight them, they're going to, like, start, like, uh, being all arrogant and, you know, but he's, 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 he's a wonderful guy. And I, I was so, um, so happy and, you know, honored that he wanted me to come out and help him out to, to prepare to fight for, uh, for Cowboy. All right. So 
you're a father and let's let's talk about what that's like being able to balance you know fatherhood and fighting i was actually it's it's easy because one my son he's out in dallas so it allows me to focus on what i need to focus on and then when the time comes i'm able to be a father for him when i go back to dallas and hang out with him and take care of him and be there for him and teach him and help him grow now how, how has being a parent changed you as an athlete uh, as an athlete it actually made me see what's more important is focusing on my training training hard and you know going out there and doing uh doing what i need to do for him as an athlete but as a same, being the same person as being an athlete you know i'm still the same crazy my love that come up there and destroy <laughs> knowing that you're you know you're a parent you've been in the sport for a very long time we always like to ask athletes what it is they fight for. What are the things that keep you motivated and what is it that you're hoping to accomplish? What I'm hoping to accomplish and what I fight for is I do fight for my son. What I'm hoping to accomplish is getting that big old belt on my waist. That's what I'm called. And, you know, and uh, building a great legacy for my son to, you know, be proud of. Now, as a fighter, is it something that you think that you'd want to pass on to your son for him to become a fighter at a later time? Some Everybody has a different answer for that. So I do. I would like for him to be a fighter, but if he wants to venture off into a different field, then you know I'm always going to be happy for him because you know I really don't want him getting beat up and being brain damaged like I am because <laughs> all my senses are right there. But <laughs> now um, with this with this fight, what is it that the fans can expect to see between you and uh, Vince Michelle when they when they tune in? I know there's going to be a lot of fireworks, especially with the way this this kid fights. Uh, he's a he's a go getter. He's he's a kid. He's he's a type of kid that just comes straight forward and, and he's very aggressive. So I know it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fireworks. So they better be prepared because this is gonna be a, a really good fight, especially the way I fight. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm not a brawler, but I'm a more of a technical fighter. But I know I'm gonna try my best to give him a, a really good show. Now for fans out there, if they want to follow you on any social media wherever they find you. If you want to follow me on Instagram, check this out. It's real easy. <laughs> it's Anthony Joku on Instagram. Facebook is Anthony the Assassin. On Twitter, same thing, Anthony, at Anthony and Joku. All right, everybody, if you guys want to follow Anthony, that's how you're going to find him on social media. Make sure you guys tune into UFC 173 to catch his fight between him and Vince Pichel. That is going to be May 24th. Yes. Hi, bye. <laughs> hey, we want to thank you guys for watching this episode of The Fight Life. We definitely want to thank Mike Kies and Anthony Jaquani for coming down, spending some time with us. Uh, Anthony never never fails, man. He, he's one of the funniest guys that we've ever had in studio. And we definitely want to wish them both luck. Uh, come UFC 173 this Saturday, May 24th. Make sure you guys tune in. But as always, without you, there is no us, and you are Fight Life Media.